The glow effect is found under the stylized category, and this effect is used all the time by basically everyone. I'll apply it to my logo and immediately it looks like it's glowing. Well, at least half of it does. We need to modify some of the controls to get everything to look the way that I actually want it to. And there are actually a decent number of controls in here that a lot of people probably ignore, which is likely why a lot of people think this is not that great of an effect. Yes, there are better third-party glows out there and you can even create your own glow by combining a bunch of blurred copies of your layer, but the glow effect actually does do a good job. So let's walk through these controls. The first one is what the glow is based on, and currently it's set to color channels, but I could change this to the alpha channel. If I zoom in on my logo, the reason why the yellow part of my logo is brighter than the green part of the logo is because the glow is based on the color channels. But if I change that to alpha channel, then we're gonna get a uniform glow over everything. It's ignoring the colors, it's just looking at the transparent versus opaque pixels. It's rare for me to wanna change the glow based on to alpha channel, but it does happen every now and then, when I don't want it really reacting to the colors. But for now, I'm gonna reset the effect so we go back to basing everything on the color channels. The next option is glow threshold, and this is basically controlling which colors generate the glow or how intensely they generate a glow. So if I dial that threshold down, then it's a lower threshold for what can glow. So if I turn it all the way down, everything is going to be very glowy and blown out. And if I increase that number higher and higher, then the colors have to be much brighter for them to actually start glowing. And this will be more obvious if I apply it to a photo. So increasing this threshold will limit this glow to being applied to only the brightest parts of the image. And decreasing that threshold will apply it to much more. I'll shut that off for now. And I'm gonna balance this out a little bit more so that everything glows. The next option is glow radius. And this is just how far out that glow basically blurs. If I dial back that threshold some more, then it's gonna show up on that green as well. Next is the glow intensity. And if I turn this all the way down to zero, it doesn't exactly turn it off. It almost looks like we have a drop shadow now. Instead, it's actually the intensity of the glow. So how bright the halo is that the glow is producing. So you can really crank that up or you can dial it back to not be quite so intense. Next is composite original. So this means the original layer prior to the effect being applied, how is it handling compositing that layer with the glow? By default, it's set to composite that original behind the glow, but I could change this to on top and then the layer will appear on top of that glow. Or I could set it to none and then it will completely remove the layer. It's now only showing us the glow. If I change that back to behind, it doesn't really make a difference, but that's just because of how intense the glow is and the next option, which is glow operation. This is basically the blending mode and we have almost every single blend mode that we do for the layers down here. So it's set to add, which makes it very hot looking, but I could change it to screen and then it won't be quite as much. I could change it to none or any other one of these blend modes. I'm gonna leave that at the default of add. And next up is the glow colors. So we're basing the glow on the color channels, but the colors of the glow themselves are based on the layer colors. So the glow over top of the yellow is more yellow and the glow over top of the green is green. But I could change this to A and B colors and arbitrary map. So A and B colors allow me to use these two color controls down here to set the glow to be whatever I want. Color A would be the outer edge of the glow and color B would kind of be like the core. So if I change color A to something really bright like this cyan color and color B to a bright magenta color and then increase that glow intensity back up to one and maybe adjust the radius a little bit, you can see how those colors are implemented into the glow. And these colors are obviously being blended in with that glow operation. So if I set it to none, we're going to see those colors much more clearly. Let me undo that so it's back to add. And I'll change these to being more of an actual glow color. So I'll do like a bright yellow for color B and more of a white yellow for color A. And now it's this golden glow over top of everything. And maybe my radius is a little too big. So I'll dial it back like that. And right after glow colors is color looping. So I said before that color A is the outer part of the glow, color B is the core. That actually wasn't accurate because the color looping was set to triangle A, B, A, meaning the inner and outer edges of the glow would be color A and the core would be B. But we could change this to what I originally said, which was sawtooth A, B, and then I'll just make these two drastically different colors so you can see now color B is the outside edge of the glow and color A is the inside. You can also change this to reverse that, B on the outside, A in the core, or triangle B, A, B, keeping color B on the inner and outer and color A at the center. I'm gonna reset that back to its default of A, B, A, 
and change these colors to be those golden colors one more time. And I'm actually gonna make a black background just by going up to layer new solid and I'll make a black solid because the glow will show up much more clearly on top of a black background. And I wanna change the colors a bit. So let's make this more of a light bluish color and then something that's a little more white with a touch of pink to it. And I'm gonna increase that glow radius so we can see it more and increase that intensity as well. Now let's take a look real close where we can see that glow over top of the logo. I'll make that pink a little bit more saturated so we can really see that. And before we get to color loops, I wanna actually look at color phase. If I increase this value, it's going to shift those two colors around. So at 180 degrees, we're basically inverting our color looping so that color B is now in the center and A is on the outside edges. And I can keep going around and around. And this could be really cool for animating a glow. And in one of the Harry Potter movies, this kind of a color phase loop was animated on the end of a wand. It's a very cool looking effect. But we can take this even further by increasing the color loops. Currently it's set to one. But if I set this to two, then we're going to see a repeated loop. So doubling up this color looping and I can increase this as much as I want. So the higher the number, the more color loops there will be, and I can always increase that phase. So you can create some very interesting looking effects this way, and this actually makes it a lot easier to see the difference between triangle ABA and say sawtooth AB. It's much harsher here because it's not looping around back to the A color before going to the B color. So I'll undo that and turn the color loops back down to one and the phase back down to zero. The next option is A and B midpoint. And this is basically like a curve to adjust where that midpoint is between the two colors. So you could influence the transition towards either one of those colors. And then finally down here at the bottom, we have glow dimensions, which is set to horizontal and vertical, but I could also only use the horizontal axis to glow or just the vertical to glow. So if you wanted to have more of a cross glow effect, then you could duplicate this, change this one to horizontal, and then maybe increase the radius further out and play with all these settings to however you like. All right, I'm gonna delete that glow and reset that back to horizontal and vertical. And the only other option we haven't looked at yet is underneath the glow colors. The last option is arbitrary map. And this is something we can actually create right here in After Effects. But to do it, we need to add a curves effect. So I'm going to bring that up and apply it to my layer, grab the pencil tool, and then draw a custom curve right here in my graph. Now I don't need this to affect my layer, but now that this has been drawn, I can click save and it will save it as an arbitrary map file. So I'm just gonna name it custom glow, click save, disable that curves, and then go to the glow effect and right here is an options button. I'm gonna click on that, choose that glow amp file, click open, and that modifies the shape of my glow. But it's also modifying the colors. So if I go back into that curves, and then change the channel to say just the red channel. And now I'll draw a curve here for just the red and then maybe go to the blue, pull out a lot of that blue color and the green I'll just make this weird shape. Save that again as the custom glow, go back into the options and reload that custom glow. Now that's actually affecting the color channels. This has never been the method that I've used for controlling the colors of my glow, but since it is a feature of this effect, I wanted to make sure that I showed you how to use it, but that is everything you need to know about the glow effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.